All right, so today's video will interest you even if you're not into Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and Jen Shaw because it's a deep dive on Brian Prison Camp where Jen Shaw reported to this weekend. I think it was Friday at 2 p.m., although they didn't even post it on the inmate website till Sunday. That's why I waited because sometimes they change the inmates prison last minute and I wanted to make sure before I put all this work in that Jen actually ended up at this prison. So we'll use her to talk about it. Okay. So here she is checked in as of today. It says release date unknown because maybe they don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I heard they update the site regularly. They probably haven't updated it with that information yet. Uh, Jennifer Shaw, there's a registration number, her actual age, if you were wondering, and that she is indeed located at FPC Bryan. So now that Jen Shaw is located 100 miles northwest of Houston, the big question is, will Coach Shaw try to relocate, as it was rumored, to a college job position coaching over there, which I think he very much was trying to do based on the gossip that was flying. You don't have to worry about Jen Shaw if you're a fan of hers. She is at one of the best minimum security federal prisons. Uh, FPC Bryan, as you can see, is on the list with Alderson, Montgomery, Yankton, and Pensacola. There's no barbed wire or any way to keep the prisoner in the system. They have to really stay on their own accord, and many do because they want to serve out their sentence in peace and get it over with and then come back to society again, there's also very little violence in these types of prisons. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Here's why jail consultants consider FPC Brian third best prison environment you can get. Uh, not up there with Camp Cupcake, but only three under. Um, FPC Brian is the third minimum security prison camp on this list. This federal prison camp is located in Bryan, Texas, this female-only inmate facility is known for its partnership with Canine Companions for Independence, where prisoners can train dogs to become service animals. That's nice. I like that. Uh, all inmates in the facility live in a four-person room. That's not too bad. With about 200 individuals assigned to each dormitory. Well, that's not exactly what I imagined when I thought dormitory. I was thinking more like state prison with like 60 people in a room. Uh, FPC Bryan provides a range of health and psychology services, thus why Jen Shaw must be there, educational offerings like GED, ESL, and adult continuing education courses are also offered to inmates to pass the time. How nice. Here's a quick video, which I cut way down, that Zucas Consulting Group shares with their clients heading off to this prison to get them to be able to cope. And they'll get a little ad out of this now because I use some of their content. <laughs> from Orange is the New Black, this is a dormitory that is exactly like what Jen Shaw's dorm is going to be like. They don't have bars on the windows. They have like four beds. You know, it's not really a room. It's more like a cubicle. Okay, let's take a look at the Brian Prison Camp handbook. Specifically for this prison camp. Okay, this is what Jen Shaw went through over the weekend at different time periods. Um, she had to go through an orientation. It says inmates are given a social screening by unit management staff and medical screening by health services and mental health staff at the time of arrival. Inmates are immediately provided with a copy of the institution rules and regulations, which includes information on inmate rights and responsibility. It also includes information on sexual assault and abuse, because as we know from other videos I've done, that's a real problem in many prisons. Within 28 days of arrival, inmates will participate in the admissions and orientation program. While in A&O, inmates are advised of the program's services policies. Within 28 days of arrival, inmates will participate in the admission and orientation program. While in A&O, 
Inmates are advised of the program services, policies, and procedures regarding the facility. And then they get into unit teams. Each inmate is assigned to a housing unit. That's the dorms. She gets a four-person little cubicle. A unit is a self-contained inmate living area that includes both housing sections and office space for unit staff. Each unit is staffed by a unit team directly responsible for the inmates living in the unit. Oh God, imagine if you get a bad one. The unit offices are located in the unit, so staff and inmates can be accessible to each other. <laughs> no privacy. The unit staff typically includes a unit manager, a case manager, correctional counselor, and unit secretary. The staff psychologist, education advisor, and unit officer are considered members of the unit team and provide input for classification purposes. Inmates are assigned to a specific unit team. Generally, the resolution of issues or matters of interest while at the institution are most appropriately initiated with the unit team. Unit team members are available to assist in many areas, including parole, release, planning, blah, 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 stuff Jen won't have to worry about for a while. Okay, general functions of unit staff, and these are the lists of the, the different, you know, roles these people play in the prisoner's so this life. is exactly what Jen's daily life is going to be based on her particular prison. It is the inmate's responsibility to check her room immediately after being assigned there and report all damages to the unit officer or correctional counselor so you don't get blamed for them. An inmate may be held financially liable for any damage to her personal living area. Each inmate is responsible for making her bed in accordance with posted regulations before work call, including weekends and holidays when she leaves the area. They're big on cleanliness. Each inmate is also responsible for sweeping and mopping her room floor, removing trash, and ensuring it is clean and sanitary. I'm trying to imagine Jen doing this, right? Oh my goodness. Cardboard boxes and other paper containers are not permitted for storage due to their combustible nature because they definitely have had fire issues. Lockers must be neatly arranged inside and out and all shelving must be neat and clean. So let me just remind you what Jen is used to dealing with and now she's got a cube, probably the size of one of those square, you see on the right she has these little square cubby holes in that closet, probably the size of that. <laughs> oh boy. Look at this. Toothpaste, toothbrushes, combs, razors, and soap for personal hygiene are issued by the institution. Inmates may purchase name brand items through the commissary. So she can spend up to $360 a week at the commissary. I'm assuming Coach Shaw will fill that up. Uh, so she might get some upper level soap, but that might cause some drama too. Um, imagine the level of their soap. It's probably pretty, you know, not great. Um, okay, so personal property limits. Items which may be retained by an inmate are limited for sanitation and security reasons. And to ensure excess personal property is not accumulated, which would constitute a fire hazard or impair staff searches of a cell. Each institution is required to establish an institution supplement regarding inmate personal property, specifically identifying personal property, which the inmate may retain. Here's the list of commissary items available to Jen Shaw. Let's see, anything good on here? Pencil cap erasers. Ooh, elbow support. Mini book light. Small photo album. Hmm. Get an envelope. Let's see what else we got. Uh, ooh, cereal. Pizza sauce. Oh, hello. Summer sausage. Turkey bites. <sighs> Gourmet. What else we got? Uh, ooh, Shea shampoo and conditioner. Hmm. Oh, you can get dandruff shampoo. I wonder if it's head and shoulders. <laughs> okay, so remember how Jen Shaw had all these elaborate clothing that she wore on everything so over the top. Oh, okay. here's one. Remember this? This is kind of a good example. Yeah, very fancy. Get this. This is her new world that she lives in. All inmates are prohibited from wearing any clothing not government issued or purchased in the commissary. No inmates may be issued cloth items. 
Commissary sales of clothing are limited to the following colors. Okay, so this is what they have for women. Pastel green, gray, and white. So that's her choice now. She has those three colors. The only exception is for religious headgear. All government clothing except undergarments. Oh, get this. Remember how glamorous Jen used to be in the fashion? Okay, well, now they take her underwear and they put her name on it with her registration number. And that's how they know that she's, like those underwears belong to her that are provided by prison. She's yeah. also allowed a work a pair of shoes, a shower pair of shoes, uh, probably so she doesn't get you know, something on her feet, right? Because it's a public shower. Um, she gets like a bunch of other, oh, she gets a slipper, okay, and a casual pair of shoes, but she has to store them under her bed or her cot or whatever. Certainly a bed is a stretch. You're allowed to have a small hobby project in your dormitory, but once you complete it, you have to say goodbye to it. You can't like put it up on the wall and be like, yay, I made that, crocheted that or whatever. Mm -mm, it's out, gone. See you later, alligator. And you're not allowed to have big hobby projects, like, you know, forget a painting or something like that. That's She's not She's allowed to have a picture of her family, but that's it. So here is what's incredible. Radios, MP3 players, and watches. Listen to this. An inmate may possess only one approved radio or MP3 player and watch at a time. The inmate must be able to demonstrate proof of ownership. An inmate who purchases a radio, MP3 player, or watch through a BOP com commissary is ordinarily permitted the use of that item at any BOP institution if the inmate is later transferred. If the inmate is not allowed to use the radio, MP3 player, or watch at the new institution, the inmate shall be permitted to mail at the receiving institution's expense the item to a destination of the inmate's choice. Okay, so in case you guys don't know what a radio is, this is a radio. <laughs> I mean, wow, we are really going back in time with that. That's how primitive prison is. That was my point in bringing it up. I mean, MP3 player, they won't even, they control your music too. You're not allowed to li listen to any music that like has explicit material in it. Um, so you best get into your classical when you're in prison. Okay, these are Jen's specific rules for Byron, Texas prison camp. The rules include items such as the following. All beds are to be made daily in a prescribed manner. Okay, and you will get disciplined if your room is not tidy. Unit meal rotation is ordinarily based on weekly sanitation ratings of each unit. The unit with the highest sanitation is called first, and the unit with the lowest rating is called last. So if you're hungry, you want to have a clean dorm area. And if you don't have a clean dorm area, you might piss off your roommates because they want to eat on time. It's very few things to look forward to. Each inmate is responsible for the cleaning and sanitation of her own room. Everyone is responsible for cleaning up after themselves. Sexually suggestive photographs are not authorized for display outside of the individual locker or cabinet. Well, there's always the cabinet. Unit televisions may be viewed during established off-duty hours. During normal working hours, unit televisions may be viewed at the discretion of staff. General wake-up call is 6 a.m and it's your responsibility to leave the unit for meals and work. Late sleepers who are unable to maintain rooms or arrive at work on time are subject to disciplinary action. Wow. Clothing exchange and laundry. Institution issue clothing to the inmate population that is properly fitted, climatically suitable, and presentable. Institutions will furnish each inmate with sufficient clothing to allow at least Three changes of clothes a week. Ew, so you have to wear the same clothing two days in a row. Ugh. I'm pulling this page up because it says right at the top that the inmates do not have access to the internet. So any postings that Jen Shaw does on her new uh, website she launched where people are paying for access are going to be done by someone in her family or a friend of hers that she's going to be able to call once a day and then they'll post what she writes, I guess. Cause she won't be doing it directly. 
So what True Links is, is an operating system for prisoners that allows them to do account transactions to their commissary, view a bulletin board for inmates, have access to a contact list with some email addresses in them, a law library uh, for legal research, to manage funds, to manage uh, true units, which um, I guess is towards commissary again, um, a prescription refill, a very limiting print feature, public messaging to only family and designated people in the system, and request to staff um, so that you can speak to your staff, like you know, your people monitoring you within the prison system. Also a survey. It's always good to know your customer service is good in a prison, right? It's kind of caught my eye, the true phone system, which basically they have to pay for and they get a code and then they get 15 minutes on this phone system. Your phone calls are recorded. You're only allowed 300 minutes per month. They have video messaging at $6 per session with a family member. You lose the money if you don't cancel in time, but if your family member doesn't show up, they, I guess, refund you the money because it's not your fault. Uh, so that's a way for people that can't see you to see you, I guess. This is uh, another thing I wanted to cover, counts. Each institution will conduct a minimum of five official inmate counts during every 24 hour period. On weekends and holidays, an additional count will be conducted at 10 a.m. The inmate is expected to be standing at bedside during official counts held at 4.05 p.m., 10 p.m. On weekdays and 10 a.m., 4.05 p.m., 10 p.m. On weekends and holidays and during any emergency count. Institutions with secure cell space are required to lock the inmates in their cells for all official counts unless the inmates are on out counts in areas such as food service, health service, visiting, etc. Disciplinary action will also be taken against inmates for leaving an assigned area before the count is clear. That's tough. The inmate must actually be seen at all counts, even if the inmate must be awakened. They do random drug tests. They're allowed to search you for contraband at any time. Contraband is considered anything you're not supposed to have. Um, and they can search your room at any time when you're there or not for contraband as well. There's an obligation to report people that are suicidal because it happens and that's in the Here's, handbook. Here's uh, job assignments and pay. All inmates who have been medically cleared will maintain a regular job assignment. Many job assignments are controlled through an inmate performance pay system. The inmate performance pay rates are as followed. Grade one, 40 cents per hour. Grade two, 29 cents per hour. Grade three, 17 cents per hour. And grade four, 12 cents per hour. Plus, by the way, you guys, you have to pay for your prison. So all, almost all this money is not going in their commissary. It's going into their bill for federal all camp. eligible food service cleared inmates will initially be assigned to food service and will remain in this capacity for a minimum of 90 days. That's where gentle start. However, some inmates may have an applicable trade for a specific job and may be directly assigned to this area. All inmates will remain in their job assignment for a minimum of 90 days. Additionally, most institutions have a significant number of inmate jobs in factories operated by the federal prison industries, also known as Unicor. Huh. Many institutions have a waiting list for factory employment. Wow. Unicor employs and trains inmates through the operation of and earnings from factories producing high quality products and services for the federal government. Some examples of products and services Unicor produces are electronic cable assemblies, executive and system furniture, metal pallet racks, stainless steel food service equipment, mattresses, towels, utility bags, brooms, data entry, signage, and printing. I'm not sure how ethical Unicor is. I mean, they sell it that it teaches you efficiency and factory skills that can help someone get a job post-prison. They also can help a person pay back their restitution quicker. But if it's at the 40 cents per hour, 
I mean, there's, that's a little questionable. Um, there's some ramifications with that on ethical side of things. But anyway, um, that's what they see. I mean, you can get certifications like forklift certifications and things like that. And they do pick inmates with huge amounts of debt to work these job positions over people who don't in terms of restitution. So these are some of the services and access to things that you can have. Adult continuing education. These are the details around this stuff. It's all about paying restitution. It's not really about bettering the person inside the prison system, although they do tout that that is a byproduct of what happens when you're inside. You know, you get all this training and yeah. So here we go. Recreation, leisure, and wellness. Now this Teresa uh, Judice really thrived at. She ended up getting a yoga instructor certification, which she really parlayed into a cool like after prison thing. Um, it says the BOP encourages inmates to make constructive use of leisure time and offer group and individual activities. At each facility, physical fitness and leisure programs are provided to promote positive lifestyle changes. These programs strive to provide inmates with opportunities to reduce stress and enhance overall health and emotional well-being. I would be working out like a mofo because it is the ticket to getting through. Leisure programs include uh, informal games, sports, physical fitness, table games, hobby crafts, music programs, intramural activities, social and cultural organizations, and movies. So there is an upside. It's not total hell. Here are some hobbies, knitting, ceramics, paper art, crocheting, quilling, plastic canvas, and beading. And so those are some things you can do to relieve stress in prison uh, and knitting, if I didn't say knitting. Oh, also drawing, you can do artwork. Um, so this highlight stuff that I just talked about that seemed like a little nicer than the rest of what I said can be taken away if you do anything wrong. So it's their way of punishing you. That's why they give it to you. So I spent the time to tell two sides if you did notice in this video. Side one is like, oh, she got it so easy for how many elderly people she hurt and her lavish lifestyle and her arrogance and all those things, right? So I tried to show that side in this video, but I also tried to show you that even prison camp being, you know, Camp Cupcake or whatever is not really a walk in the park. So I guess to say it to you, there really is no such thing as club fed, really, because, or club cupcake or whatever, because it's hard. I mean, you know, but what I will say is that the justice department at one time was giving white collar criminals who were stealing, let's say 50 million plus only like a few years at one of these types of prisons, which is why the public got outraged. But then over the years, they crack down on white collar crime and no longer does that concept really exist anymore. You know, Bernie Madoff, for example, got several life sentences for the huge amount of money that he stole. But in the old days, he might have only gotten a few years in prison because they didn't see it the same. It was very unfair because like, you know, a guy walks in with a gun and steals $10 from like an, a 7-Eleven would get, 10, get times. 10 times the time than a guy who stole 30 million, you know, from a pump and dump on the, the stock exchange. So anyway, not very fair, unfortunately. Our justice system doesn't work for the criminal. It doesn't work for the victim. It really needs some work. I'm open to your ideas. <laughs> Let's fix it, shall we? Let's pretend like we're young and we can change the world and let's fix it. All right, you guys, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. You never know what you're going to get on my channel. And please feel free to disagree with me. I don't mind.